Hi, what we have here is an apparatus that can measure force. I have this sensor hooked up to the computer. If I pull down on it, the force measures over here. Let's see how much weight this brick has. It is 20 newtons. Let's put this in water and see what happens. No tricks with the camera, it's still the same brick, and now it's only 11 newtons. Let's go find out where nine newtons went. All right, we saw just a second ago that when we put a brick in a bucket of water, it seemed like nine newtons disappeared. Let's see if we can figure out where that was. We had a string with a brick tied to it, and we found out that it had a weight of 20 newtons. That meant the string had to pull back up with a tension of 20 newtons to hold it in place. When we put it in a bucket of water, something mysterious happened. We still had the same brick, it still had the same mass, and it still had the same acceleration due to gravity. Its weight is still 20 newtons, but the tension required to hold it up this time was only 11 newtons. It seemed like there was force missing. I could tell there's an imbalance of forces on here the way it's drawn right now. If these were the only two forces acting on it, it's got 20 newtons pulling down, 11 newtons pulling up. It should accelerate downwards. There must be some other force pushing up on this. That force is called the buoyant force. Let's see what the buoyant force does. Where does it come from? Well, when that brick was in the water, its top was closer to the surface. There was a small change in height. The bottom of the brick was farther away from surface. It was deeper. So a pressure pushes down on top of it, a pressure pushes to the left, a pressure pushes to the right, but underneath there was a larger pressure. There was more force per area on the bottom of this brick. This imbalance in forces is the buoyant force. It is the net upward force on the brick. Anything that gets submerged in a fluid, even if it's partially submerged, even if something up here was floating, it has a net upward force that is the buoyant force. This is also known as Archimedes' principle. Archimedes realized that this buoyant force is the same as the weight of the displaced fluid. So if we could find the volume of that fluid and the density of that fluid, we would know its mass. And if we multiply that gra by gravity, we would know its weight. This is where the formula for buoyant force comes from. We need to know three things. The density of the fluid that the brick is in, the volume of that displaced fluid, and the acceleration due to gravity. Another way to think of the volume of this displaced fluid is the volume of the object that is submerged. If the whole thing sinks to the bottom, then all of its volume is submerged. If it's floating, then only part of its volume is submerged. All right, let's recap the main formula that we have so far. The buoyant force is the density of the fluid times the volume of the object that has been submerged times the acceleration due to gravity. All right, we're gonna see that a whole bunch in this chapter. It is worth noting too, a lot of times I see students that think if something sinks, it doesn't have a buoyant force. Well, what we just saw with that brick, it had a weight of 20 newtons pulling down on it and it had a buoyant force of nine newtons. That buoyant force exists whether or not the brick floats or sinks. If this brick was sitting on the bottom of the bucket, 20 newtons of weight would pull down, 9 newtons of buoyant force would push up, and the 11 newtons here comes from the surface that it's resting on, and we know that's called the normal force. The force that the surface 
has to push back in order to hold up the brick. Coincidentally, it's the same as what we saw in the tension of the string in order to keep the brick from sinking. We had a tension of 11 newtons and a buoyant force of 9 newtons. Okay, let's take a break from these notes and solve some problems that require buoyant force. Okay, here's our first complicated problem that ties together multiple things from this unit. Uh, let's imagine we have an aluminum sphere resting on the bottom of a pool of olive oil. It's the same mass of aluminum that we had before and the same volume of aluminum, but this time it's a sphere. Uh, the specific gravity of olive oil is 0.7. So let's see if we can put all this information together and try and find the apparent weight. The apparent weight is the weight that it appears to have while it's in the olive oil. If, uh, if you've ever tried to lift someone up while you're in a pool, they appear to be a lot lighter. That's their apparent weight. First thing we have to do is list all the information that's been given. Uh, I do know that the mass is 5.4 kilograms. I know that the volume is 0 0.002 meters cubed. It was given that the specific gravity of olive oil is 0 0.7. And I have to ask myself, what is it I'm trying to find? I'm looking for the apparent weight of this object. All right, in order for me to solve this, I'd have to label all the forces that are acting on this sphere. It's got an acceleration due to gravity pulling it down. We call that its weight. It has a buoyant force pushing up on it. If those were the only two forces, it would be neutrally buoyant. It wouldn't float and it wouldn't sink. It would be the same density as the water. But it's resting on the bottom of this pool of olive oil, so there must be some other force pushing up on it. We could think of it as the normal force exerted by the bottom of the tank, or we could realize that that's the same thing as the apparent weight. It appears to be that heavy. All right. Well, I don't know how to find the apparent weight, but I can find the buoyant force and I can get the normal weight. And from that, I should be able to figure it out. I don't know how you do it, but I solve problems this way. I say the sum of the forces in the up direction are equal to the sum of all the forces in the down direction. If this wasn't true, it would either accelerate up or down. And since it's at rest and it's not accelerating, I know that the up forces, the buoyant force, plus the apparent weight are equal to the forces down, the normal weight. All right, the buoyant force is the density of the fluid times the volume that has been submerged times gravity. I should be able to get the apparent weight because I know the normal weight is its mass, 5.4, times acceleration due to gravity. All right, time to get out the calculator. Although it wasn't given, I know how to turn specific gravity into density real fast. That's where we just move the decimal three spaces. So the density of specific, or from the specific gravity of olive oil, I know its density is 700. The volume that was displaced is the entire volume of the sphere. And this is gonna come out to be I got that the apparent weight is 39.2 newtons. So we're back to our brick. Hopefully by now you have a better understanding of where those nine newtons went. It started out and it had a weight of 20, and it's 11, and we know now that the force of the water pushing up on it is nine newtons. That's the buoyant force. 